Good morning, everyone. Please be seated. Not too many announcements this morning as we come to this second Sunday of the Advent season. Uh, just to remind everyone that the uh, city of London and Middlesex uh, County has moved into what's called the orange zone in terms of, of COVID precautions. That does not mean um, many changes for how we gather together for our worship right now. Um, the only real change is, is for Christina, that all music being sung, um, unless there's a, a barrier between uh, Christina and the congregation, she has to wear a mask while she's singing. Um, so, uh, Christina, thank you for suffering through that and, and offering that on our behalf. In terms of how it affects the rest of the life of the congregation, if you're planning on having a meeting, it should be done virtually at this point. We should not be gathering in person. And it's the same for pastoral care visits. I was starting to begin to make some visits in people's homes. Um, all visits, if possible, need to be done via uh, Zoom or uh, a phone call at this point in time while we're in the orange zone. Um, other than that, I don't think there's too many more announcements other than the ones that were on the screen. Um, a warm welcome to anyone who might be visiting today, and we'll begin our service with our opening hymn.
Please stand as you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Let us pray. Almighty God, who sent your servant John the Baptist to prepare your people to welcome the Messiah, inspire us, the ministers and stewards of your truth, to turn our disobedient hearts to you, that when the Christ shall come to be our judge, we may stand with confidence before his glory, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal, through him who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated for the proclamation of the word. A reading from the book of Isaiah. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God, Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she's, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in, in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry out! And I said, What shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother's sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. to what the Lord God is saying, for he is speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly, his salvation is very near to those who fear him. <laughs> 
that his glory may dwell in our land. Let me hear what you will say, O oh Lord. Mercy and truth have met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth, the righteousness shall look down from heaven let me hear what you will say O lord the lord will indeed grant prosperity and our land will yield its increase righteousness shall go before him and peace shall be a pathway for his feet. Let me hear what you will say, O Lord. A reading from the second letter of Peter. But do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are, be to, are to be dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be in leading lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire? But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
I pray that I might speak to you this morning in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. So in the Bible, we have four Gospels. We have Matthew, we have Mark, we have Luke, and we have John. We have four different accounts of the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. And each one of those four Gospels adds something significant to the Christmas story that we are going to be celebrating in just over a couple of weeks. Each one of those adds something to the significance and the meaning of Christmas for our lives. Luke has the angels and the shepherds and the baby lying in a manger. Matthew, he has the shining star and the wise men traveling from the east in search of the baby Jesus. Matthew has the wise men arriving and bearing their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh, the stuff that Christmas pageants are made of. And then there's John, who offers us that absolutely incredible poem, that hymn about the significance of this birth. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and lived among us. But what about Mark? What about Mark's Gospel? What does Mark's Gospel add to the story? What does Mark's account have to teach us? Because in Mark's Gospel there is no manger, there's no baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, There's no shepherds keeping watch over their flocks by night. There's no Mary pondering in her heart all these things in her heart. In fact, in Mark's gospel, there is no Christmas story. There's no details. There's no mention of Jesus' birth at all. Jesus' ministry, in Mark, Jesus' ministry, the first time Jesus comes on the scene is while he's an adult. He's already an adult. So if that's the case, what could Mark possibly have to teach us about the significance and the meaning of Christmas? I think the answer lies in the opening line of that gospel reading that we heard this morning. Here's the opening line. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The very first line of Mark's Gospel, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Those simple words can teach us something profound and something life-giving. Not only about Christmas, but about the entire story that Mark is about to tell in the chapters that follow. Those simple words can offer us something profound and life-giving about the story Mark is about to tell about the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus. But it's so easy for us to miss that lesson because of how brief and how direct Mark can be. Mark is a gospel writer that gets straight to the point. It's a common trait throughout his entire gospel. So let me repeat that opening line one more time. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the word to really pay attention to is beginning. Mark is not saying that what he's about to write, that what you're about to read, Mark is not saying that his gospel is the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. But rather what Mark is saying is that It is the beginning of the good news. In other words, the whole story that he is about to tell about 
the whole story he's about to tell about Jesus, beginning with John the Baptist and his message of repentance, uh, beginning with, with Jesus getting baptized and then calling his first disciples to follow him, the stories that we hear of all the healings and all the miracles, the story that we hear of his death and his resurrection, all of it. Mark wants us to know that all of it is just the beginning. And that is true of Christmas as well. Christmas that we are preparing to celebrate. Christmas, our Christmas celebrations, when they arrive, they don't end when every present is unwrapped under the tree and the meal that we've prepared has been shared. Christmas doesn't even end at the, on, on the last day of that 12-day feast. Rather, it's just the beginning. It's just the beginning of what the story of Christmas can mean for your life. Mark, even though he doesn't have a Christmas story, Mark wants us to know that the story of Christmas we hear and we celebrate in the other Gospels, Mark wants us to know that the entire story of the good news of Jesus Christ that he tells in his own account of things is just the beginning. God is not finished yet. God continues to come to us. The story of God's grace and God's mercy, it continues to be written in and through the lives of all of God's children. And that includes you. That includes me. God is still with you. God is working through you. Some in ways you might be aware of, others in way you, ways you can't even fathom. God is with you, working in and through you, continuing the story of good news that began with the story that Mark tells, that Matthew, Luke, and John, the story that they tell, a story that now continues among us, in us, and through us. The story of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, continues to be written Every single time the hungry are fed, whenever strangers are welcomed, whenever the sick are cared for, whenever outcasts are made to feel included, whenever the suffering are comforted, this story of good news that only begins in Mark and continues to be told through each one of us, this story of God's saving love, it is so much bigger than any pandemic. It is so much bigger than your worries and your fears. It is so much bigger than any challenge and struggle that we might have to endure in our lives. The message to take with us, God is not done. The promise of Christmas is bigger than we could have ever imagined. God's grace and mercy and blessing extends farther and deeper than we can possibly fathom. Because this, all of this, is just the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Amen. Standing as able, let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
standing, sitting, or kneeling, let us pray. In joyful expectation, let us pray to our Savior and Redeemer, saying, Lord Jesus, come soon. O wisdom from the mouth of the Most High, you reign over all things to the ends of the earth. Come and teach us how to live. Lord Jesus, come soon. O Lord and Head of the House of Israel, you appeared to Moses in the fire of the burning bush, and you gave the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm and ransom us. Lord Jesus, come soon. O branch of Jesse, standing as a sign among the nations, all kings will keep silence before you, and all peoples will summon you to their aid. Come, set us free and delay no more. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O key of David and scepter of the house of Israel, you open and none can shut, you shut and none can open. Come and free the captives from prison. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O morning star, splendor of the light eternal and bright sun of righteousness, Come and enlighten all who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O King of the nations, you alone can fulfill their desires. Cornerstone, you make opposing nations one. Come and save the creature you fashioned from clay. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. O Emmanuel, hope of the nations and their Savior. Come and save us, Lord our God. Lord Lord Jesus, Jesus, come come soon. Gracious God, in the midst of this pandemic that your people have been living in this year, there is not one person who has not been affected in some way. We ask that you would grant your children strength and courage to continue to persevere patience in their waiting. We pray especially for health care workers, that you would give them your strength and your courage and uphold them by your love. Help them to have the strength to face and to do the work that they are called to do. We pray for all those who are sick. We especially pray for those who have finished their course in faith because of this pandemic. We know that numbers are increasing. We know that deaths are increasing. We ask that you be a source of comfort to families who mourn. May the promise of resurrection and new life be a light that shines in their darkness. We pray for those who are alone. We pray for those who are living with the disappointment of possibly not being able to gather over the Christmas holidays. We pray for those who continue to live with economic uncertainty in their lives, for those who have lost livelihoods and jobs. We pray for all those who are vulnerable, who continue to live in fear. Help us in our own lives of faith to be able to see and to point others to the many signs of your presence and your grace in our midst. Help us to be able to help one another see that you are a God who loves us enough to come to us. Lord Jesus, come soon. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy. He welcomes sinners and invites them to his table. Let us confess our sins confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we We confess confess that that we we have have sinned sinned against against you in thought, word, and deed by by what what we have have done 
and by by what we have have left undone. We have have not not loved you with our whole heart. heart. We We have have not not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. As you are able, I would invite you to stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let's turn and acknowledge a sign of that peace and then be seated for the offertory hymn. God, our strength, we are nothing without you. Receive all we offer you this day as you sustain us with your mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing, you called all worlds to be, and still you draw the universe to its fulfillment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. 
In Christ your Son, the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of a new creation given, yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who bear your threefold likeness look for the city of peace, in whose light we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gate of glory and calls us now to share in the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, a light with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come, at supper with his disciples, he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body. It is broken for you. After supper, he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, and with them ourselves, a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us, and upon this bread and this wine, that overshadowed by his life-giving power they may be the body and blood of your Son and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the apostles and prophets, and of all our brothers and sisters living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be to you, Lord of all ages. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God of promise, you prepare a banquet for us in your kingdom. Happy are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. The gifts of God are for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Standing as you're able, let us pray. All your works praise you, O Lord, and your faithful servants bless you. Gracious God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. May we who share his body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be steadfast in faith, be joyful in hope, be untiring in love all the days of your life. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated for our closing hymn. This service has ended, but your service has just begun. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Thanks be to God.